All right, and we should be live. Uh, I'll make sure I, I take a look here if there's anything that comes up in the chat uh, as we get this going. I'm just going to get our presentation set up here. Really excited uh, for today's presentation. Um, we're going to start a series which we're going to you know keep rolling with um, Canadian Football 101 uh, and kind of go back uh, and and we've done a lot of videos on a lot of different topics on this channel, but you know, really go back and look at um, some of the key fundamental aspects of, of Canadian football, whether, you know, you're a new coach, a uh, young coach, or a, uh, or a player yourself, there's a lot that can be learned, um, you know, from going back to the basics and, and really understanding the game. Um, just some housekeeping stuff. If you have, uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. We're going to answer questions uh, live as they come. Uh, which will be great, both myself and Coach Ray. Coach, thanks for joining us today. Really excited to have you working with us on this project. I know, super excited to be here. You know, it, the fundamentals are sometimes overlooked and, and even forgotten, you know, going through and working on some of this, getting ready for this. It's, uh, you know, sometimes you uh, you forget more than you've ever learned, right? So it's uh, it's it was good to revisit and I'm excited to talk about it. Absolutely. Um, and just as we get going here, there's already a bunch of likes on here. Thanks very much. It helps other people find our video uh, and find our, our channel. Um, if you guys like the video, obviously, if you haven't yet, please hit subscribe. Helps us out a ton. Uh, we're pushing and trying to get to a thousand, um, you know, and, and keep this as a, a really accessible free resource for, for athletes and coaches. Uh, and, you know, especially I think going into the summer, Braden, like really trying to expand and do more stuff from a player's viewpoint, which is really what we're looking for today, um, is to, to really take you guys through Canadian football from a basic kind of thousand foot level um, and help you better understand whether it's your high school playbook or, uh, you know, a future high school playbook, if, if you're even a younger player than that or going into university, help you understand that a lot better because you understand the fundamentals. So uh, if you are already, that's great. You know, always engage with us on social media at 3 down dev on Twitter uh, and at 3 down development on Instagram. Uh, we, we post a lot of short stuff there, but we do a lot of, you know, polls and things like that as well on our Twitter, um, which is which is a fun follow if, if you're looking for more Canadian football content. Um, like I said, make sure you like uh, the the stream here. You know, it's great if you, you throw some comments on there, helps more people see it as well. If you have any questions, please, we're going to stop and answer those as we go. Uh, and like I said, subscribe. We're pushing, getting close to that 1,000. Um, you know, but we're not there yet. So a thousand would be a huge number for us. So help us out, hit subscribe, share with a friend. Uh, that would be awesome. So, you know, today we're looking at um, Canadian football and, and the differences between, you know, the Canadian game and the American game. And one of the things I think is the Canadian game is a lot more fun when you understand it. And I think there's a lot of people that play Canadian football and are fans of American football. And, you know, I love my fancy football team. I love watching the NFL. I'm a big NFL draft guy, but, you know, doing this channel and spending, you know, even more time watching film uh, the Canadian game has some unique, really interesting elements that I think, you know, the American game lacks, frankly. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, becoming a, a fan of the Canadian game, I think the more you understand, the more you'll love it. Um, larger field, right. Both wider, longer and larger end zones, uh, pre-snap motion, uh, which is a huge element different between the Canadian game and the American game, uh, you know, 12 players per side, um, obviously makes a difference. I think a lot of people think of the next two things as the two biggest things. I'd be interested to hear your take, Braden, on, on you know, what do you think the biggest difference is? Um, you know, I kind of had these in descending order for, for, uh, for me, but 12 players per side. And then obviously three downs. That's the big thing everyone thinks about. Um, I actually think these other things above it have a greater impact on the game, on how the game is played in Canada than the actual three downs. Uh, and the defensive player is a yard off the ball. Um, those are obviously there's more differences w within these. There's lots of little rule changes and we can get to, you know, we'll get to some of the field dimensions in a sec just because they're critical to understand formations and then getting into, you know, how offense is called plays and how defense is trying to defend the field. But, you know, Brayden, I'd be interested to hear, we didn't talk about this actually before, you know, what do you think is, is the biggest of these five things? Or is there another thing that, you know, really makes a difference between the Canadian game and the American game? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously the larger field is uh, would probably be, be my top one. Um, even the differences in the, the, the width of the hash marks are such a, you know, if you're, if you're on the left hasher in the middle of the field, 
that that's a that's a lot of room to operate and i think the uh you know that's probably the biggest thing for me the pre-snap motion um you know, if you're ever at a CFL camp or, or if you're a high school player and that first time that guy's running full speed at you with a waggle, um, I don't know that, uh, you know, there's any anything else in football that can prepare you for that. Uh, those, those would definitely be my top two things. Obviously, with 12 players adding an extra receiver on the offensive side and a defense back on the other side, um, from a quarterback's perspective, definitely is a big thing. Um, and on the three downs, obviously, you know, needing uh, you need to be productive on the offensive side of the ball on first down to to move to move the sticks. You don't really get that. Uh, you don't get uh, an extra chance to do something over up here. Absolutely. So I just want to throw this up here. These are two uh, uh, great diagrams from knowhow.com that I found. Uh, just highlighting the difference in the size of the field. Uh, you know, in American field, you're looking at 100 yards versus Canadian field, 110 yards. This is a big one. I, I think people always think about the length, Braden, which I don't think is really, you know, the key fundamental difference. I think the biggest difference is the width, right? That extra five yards, like, sure, I guess it comes up from time to time, but, you know, you're looking at that 65 yard width. And like you said, the, 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 dis, the spacing in the hashes, you know, makes a huge difference. Um, and the 20 yard end zone is just a much bigger uh, end zone to defend as well. So I think a lot of people think, oh, three downs, it's so hard on offense. Well, when you take this bigger field, right, you know, you have a defined strong and weak side in the Canadian game versus the NFL hashes are like three footballs apart, right? It's tiny, um, you know, and the expanded end zones, there's a lot there for offenses to work with. No, for sure. When you could be on the five yard line, and still throw a 25 yard pass in the end zone. That's, uh, you know, you have a lot more room to operate, you know, in the red zone where, you know, down south, you, you don't have that, uh, that area to work with. Absolutely. Um, just outlining some key rule differences here before we dive into formations. Um, motion and alignment rules. So 12 athletes on the field at a time, we already touched on that. Seven of them have to be on the line of scrimmage. That's the same as the American game. Where we get different is uh, being able to move off the line of scrimmage. Okay, so you're going to have uh, the athletes off the line of scrimmage are eligible um, and the athletes on the end of the line of scrimmage are eligible. So we'll get to a, a, a picture in a sec. But, you know, you're looking at the end man on the line of scrimmage being eligible players, the five typically offensive linemen being ineligible uh, on the, in the core of the formation and the five athletes that are off. Uh, sorry, the athletes that are off the line of scrimmage, the seven athletes off the line of scrimmage, they are all eligible and all have unlimited motion. Um, your two end players line of scrimmage can motion. It just has to be on the line of scrimmage. So that kind of brings us to our first video here. Okay, you'll just taking a look at this. So the really basic downfield pass play. All right. But just you see the difference in the space. And, and like Coach Ray brought up on that the width of the hash marks. This clip really shows you how much bigger the strong side of the field is when the ball is on a hash versus the weak side of the field. And you also get a chance to see, uh, you know, that unlimited motion aspect of it as well. So, you know, definitely some big fundamental differences. And we're going to now get less into the, you know, what are the differences between the Canadian and the American game and now more into how is the Canadian game structured uh, and going through basic formations and defensive alignments. Okay. So I just want to start here. Our, our diagram, the other one's not coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll get to, I have another one there for that in a sec, but we'll just talk about two back first. A lot of, you know, base offenses are two back offenses. Uh, a lot of high schools will base out of two back. Um, if you're in two back, you obviously have a second running back. It's exactly what it sounds. It can be a fullback, can be a second tailback. Um, and you have four wide receivers. Uh, the difference from that being to 5R, you'd have a fifth receiver and, and that second running back, uh, you know, isn't, uh, isn't on the field. Uh, or maybe you have a second running back lined up as a receiver. You can get into all kinds of stuff there. Um, just taking a look from a, from a defensive personnel standpoint, not sure why our diagrams aren't coming up there. Um, that's odd. Okay, there we go. And I see, yeah, that one's working. Strange that the uh, the picture's not up there. That's different on our end, but that's okay. We'll skip it. Um, I might just pull 
pivot real quick here, coach, and pull up our, yeah. uh, our my just play. I'm not sure why we're not getting those visuals in there that were in there before. Uh, yeah, I'll pull up our my just play here for uh, 23, 32. You know, why don't we just start it? Um, yeah, we can start sure. with them. Yeah, I'm not sure why those aren't in there. Um, I want to see if it moved them. Here, let's start with 22 here, Coach. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I'll let you start with that. My apologies there, sure. guys. This was running before, and it's, it's looking different now. So why don't you run us through kind of from the field to the boundary? Um, you know, you got four receivers on the field. Um, and what you're looking at from a from a coaching standpoint there in terms of what those positions, you know, what what are they playing? Um, you know, what what's the role of each receiver there as you go from the field to the boundary? Yeah, for sure. So we'll start up up at the top of the screen. Um, you know, your your Z, your Z receiver, um, really for me has always been a, a possession bid big body type receiver. Um you know, he is, uh, he's a guy that that's a big throw, you know, to get it all the way out there. So you got to make sure he's able to uh, jump and catch that football working inside to the Y spot. Um, he's going to be more of a, of a vertical threat um, with that waggle. Um, you know, you're going to see him throw a lot of post routes, a lot of verticals. Um, that's, uh, that's going to be your big play guy. Um Working inside to the fullback, um, he's, you know, you can do this a couple of different ways out of 22. You can have him as a, as a tight end on the line of scrimmage. Western here has him in the fullback spot. Um, often in Canadian football, the fullback is tied with the Sam linebacker. Um, so with the fullback being in the box, you got the Sam in the box as well. Um, you have your basic tailback in the pistol there. Um, now into the boundary here, you get your W. Um, generally, he's going to be a route runner, somebody who's good to work in small spaces, um, especially, you know, here um, in this picture with them being on the, uh, the right hash here. He's going to be a guy that you need, you know, to be able to make some room in space. And then bottom of the screen, X receiver, um, he's a, he's generally your big play guy. He's your, you know, your stud, you know, stud receiver. Um, you know, quick comment here on twins. Um, this is kind of the, the base formation for me, um, from a young player's perspective, I think from a young quarterback perspective, it gives your player the best opportunity, um, to see the field and see the contours of the defense, um, Twins is, you know, as balanced as you can get in Canadian football. Absolutely. And, you know, going defensively here across the board, again, your field corner, typically in a Canadian defense, I tried to match these guys up color coded some of our other diagrams, you know, which are there, but aren't, aren't coming up when we presented here. Um, you know, they're, they're color coded like this as well. I'm hoping our, our other ones work as we go, but uh, your field corner is typically going to match up with your Zed field corner has to play in a ton of space. So usually they're really rangy uh, and athletic just because, you know, they have to play in so much space to the field. You can get away with being a little undersized. Um, you're going to have your boundary corner is usually your best man to man coverage player. And we'll get to that as we talk about the matchups and different formations. Um, your halfbacks are kind of, you know, in the American game, you might call them a strong safety. Um, you know, they are going to, you know, have to be able to tackle, uh, they're a little closer to the middle of the field than the corners. They're going to match up with the number two receivers. So your field half here is usually going to be related to your Y receiver or the second eligible player to the field. Your boundary halfback is usually going to be related to your second eligible receiver to the boundary. Um, because it's a two back look, uh, the Sam is going to be in the box with the fullback. If it was a one back look, meaning that this uh, fullback was out here as a receiver, then typically the Sam would be out of the box. And then you're left in the box with your Mike and Will linebacker, um, you know, kind of relating to your quarterback and the running back, but really relating to the six gaps. If you have four down defensive linemen, um, you know, the six gaps that you're going to get um, from the offensive line. So 
ultimately, you know, if it, defensively, we always want to have, you know, everybody covered down, meaning that we have a DB or a linebacker for each uh, offensive player. Uh, and then we want to have in the box, if there are six gaps pre presented, we want to have six uh, defensive players. In this picture with the fullback, they create a seventh gap, um, you know, and that's that's going to give you, you know, a seventh gap to defend. Now that the Sam linebacker is going to end up in the box um, and uh, ultimately have to cover uh, the gap created by the fullback. OK, um, so here it is from a defensive perspective, uh, you know, just looking at it uh, in terms of X's and O's. Um, so your two boundary defenders will relate to your two boundary receivers Two field uh, DBs will relate to your two uh, field receivers. And then this Sam will, will be related to the fullback. If this fullback moved to the other side, some teams will bump the wheel over, bump the mic over, bump the Sam in. Some teams will run the Sam across. Um, it's, it's really up to you, but ultimately these, you know, three linebackers, wherever the three gaps are created by this, by, you know, this offensive line and the fullback, they're going to fit the gaps not being fit, you know, by the offensive line. Okay. I think what we'll do uh, is because I think some of our one back slides are, are a little off. Um, well, we'll start with the two back stuff, Braden, and then we'll, we'll flip back over to the one back stuff at the end uh, and see what works there. Um, but taking a look at, uh, you know, three back or um, three by one here um, as kind of a different look, you know, when you're running an offense, a lot of teams that run two back, they'll run some version of three by one uh, as well as two by two. What are kind of the advantages Braden in three by one and like what are offensive coordinators looking for at a three by one? Yeah. So what, you know, automatically here looking at this picture, you get your X on an ISO with the, the boundary corner. Um, the other thing you're going to get is the will to play in space a little bit. Um, this is probably my favorite formation to RPO out of. Um, you know, when you get that tight box, you really get to play with the linebacker's position and, and if they're going to uh, run fit or if they're going to drop into coverage. Um, I really like being able to spread to the field here as well and st still keep the bodies in the box to be able to run the football. Um, you know, personnel-wise, depends on how they're going to do it. If they're going to bring the half over, if they're going to bump the sand out over onto three. Um, there's a lot of different things that a, a defensive coordinator here is going to, you know, be able to do. Um, and this is one of my favorite formations just in terms of, of being able to game plan around how they play their linebackers in this formation and what they do with their coverage. Absolutely. And the biggest challenge here defensively, and you can see it, um, is you want to, again, relate uh, and have enough uh, players in the box to fit the, se the seven gaps as they create with the fullback, okay? You also want to have, you know, all the receivers covered down. The challenge that three-by-one presents that two-by-two two doesn't is now we have a one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. So really from a defensive coach's standpoint, we're looking at this going, it's going to give away what coverage we're in if we bring the boundary half over like Queens does here to defend number three you know, we're playing man in the boundary, right? Or at least, you know, on most routes, even if it's zoned by definition, that boundary corner is going to end up one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on this X receiver. Uh, and that creates a huge challenge. So the opposite, if, you know, we were to leave the boundary half over here is now they have three receivers and two DBs. And this Sam is in conflict. Even if the free safety is over here, it's hard to get, you know, the amount of low players you need to the field in, in some kind of zone concept. Um, so you can choose to defend this a few different ways here. Queens brings the halfback over. That is a really simple way to do it in terms of the box stays the same seven players for seven gaps. The assignments stay the same. It would say if you're playing man or, or zone, you still have the same amount of players, uh, relating to the same amount of receivers. You're three over three to the field, one over one to the boundary and the free safety is free. And then depending on the coverage, you can rotate to whatever, wherever you need to be. Uh, but again, the challenge is like Braden mentioned, your X is typically your best wide receiver. Now he's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and, that, and that's a tough matchup. Taking a look here, you know, the way a lot of teams choose to defend three by one because uh, they don't want to leave the, the uh, boundary wide out one-on-one -on -one is they're going to leave the boundary half over uh, in the boundary. So they won't go one-on-one. -on -one. They'll put this boundary half somewhere on the boundary side of the hash mark or the weak side of the hash mark. And 
that'll let him help out on this number one receiver. The challenge uh, offensively, um, or the challenge defensively now is how do you handle potentially four eligible receivers to the field, right? Sure, your Sam linebacker can cover the fullback, but you're now three on three everywhere else. It's hard to play zone coverages uh, when you don't have a plus one advantage. Um, seeing a question there, do you guys prefer balancing the Sam out or bringing the half over uh, instead versus 31? Um, that's tough. I think it depends on, you know, my like my background, it, most of the defenses that I've played with, we have HBO'd. Uh, you kind of know what you're going to get either way uh, is what I would say. And it just depends on what you think you can defend better. If you're great in the box, then I might not HBO uh, and give my boundary corner more support and, you know, make the Sam play in more space and play a gap down in the box. Um, if I have a great boundary corner, I'm more likely to go play one-on-one, -on -one. but I think the way the game is going, uh, you have to depend uh, on having multiple answers um, I think you have to be able to, in your defensive scheme, find different ways to double the boundary wide out, whether it's with the boundary half or showing HBO and rotating the coverage back to the boundary or, or playing some kind of box where you, you push the will out of the box and, and you're rotating that way. Um, I think you need more than one answer, but, but that's a great question. Um, you know, what brain for you, like obviously uh, looking at this offensively, um, you know, when you see this version of, of the cover down, like what, what are you looking to do offensively? Yeah, really. I'm, right now I'm looking at, at three on three, basically in the, to the boundary here or to the field here uh, with uh, if we're Xing the fullback out or if the fullback's staying in protection. Um, offensively, my, my main thing is I want to, I want to put that Sam in as much conflict as I can Um so whether I, whether I cross the fullback, you know, looking, game planning for it, if I cross the fullback, back cross the formation, what's that say I'm going to do? Um, if I put the, the ball in the running back's gut pre-snap, um, what's he going to do? Because um, I need to trust that my receivers are going to win a one-on-one -on -one if we're one-on-one -on -one in the field um, and take that space. And, and how does that change if you do get the HBO look here? So if you, you know, going back to the previous slide, like what are you looking to do offensively if you get a team that brings the half over? Yeah, if I bring the half over, really, you know, again, it's going to be the same with the, with the will backer here, I think, in my opinion. Um, I, want to, I want to try to win one-on-one -on -one, um, with that X receiver. Um, football's a, football's a, a win-your-matchup kind of deal. Um, Right now, they're, they're outnumbering me here to the uh, field, so we're gonna we're gonna ta attack that boundary corner. I'm gonna try to push the football uh, in the run game to the edge here um, and try to win that way as well. Absolutely, and I think that's one of the underrated things about three by one is when you get teams at HBO like running the ball back in the boundary. Um, you know, I think is uh, is is a huge point for for young defensive players to understand, okay, when we HBO, we are more likely to have the team run the ball to the boundary. When we don't, we're more likely to get the run back to the field. Um, taking a look at 13 here, uh, one by three, what I call trips week. I just wanted to have a clip in here because I think it really highlights some of the challenges, you know, before you even get to the X's and O's, the offense can put on defenses. So when you, we talked about, you know, big field uh, and unlimited motion, some of the challenges that that creates is you see here, they're in a one by three formation, meaning we have one receiver to the field, three to the boundary, or 13. Some people call this trips week. Okay. And there's a fullback here to the field, wherever the fullback is in the box, you're going to need a seventh defender, right? You're going to need a seventh guy to fit in the gap. So in this case here, the Sam is tied to the fullback. Okay. And then they've rotated the coverage. You see they're three on three into the boundary here. And then they have a high player in the middle of the field. So to me, this is kind of a, a defensive neutral look. They're matching the numbers um, to, to each side, one-on-one, -on -one, three on three with that free player in the middle of the field. And you might think, okay, we're, we're matched, we're good in the numbers, but this is when you know the, the challenges come in offensively. You look at all this space, right? Whether it's just a quick game pass route, whether it's running the ball to the field, um, you know, there's so much room there to defend. Uh, you know, and here uh, Sask ends up running a little RPO, right? where now they get the linebackers to bury and you see all this room they have to the field. So the football um, that's like simple pitch and catch it. And you really see the power of changing the formation changes where the stress is on the defense. 
So, you know, here's a, here's a diagram of, of Western here in, in 13, uh, you know, Braden, what, like to you, what do you like about 13 and how are you going to try and use it? Yeah. I mean, automatically, you know, one thing I want to talk about here is, is formationally it allows you to do, you know, a couple things with your Z and X receiver. Um, if you, if you like your, your X in the boundary and that's where that guy stays, um, obviously he can, you can keep him over in that formation. I've been on teams where they flip every play. Um, but if you want to go fast here, um, you can, you can have your, your Z be the, the ISO to the bottom of the field. Um, just, I, I love all the space to the field here. Um, that's a big thing for me. Again, like we talked about in thir- or in 31, um, there's a lot of room on the edge here. You got to get a lot of flow from the linebackers here. Um, it's a great play action formation as well to get those shots. Um, think about verticals, crossing back across the field. Um, you give yourself a lot of room um, to work in the field with this formation. Absolutely. Defensively here, I just, I had Queens, uh, this clip, they've HBO'd now to the boundary. We say HBO, we mean half back over. So they're taking their half back to the field and saying, hey, we got to match the numbers in the boundary. They have three, we need to have three uh, and bringing, bringing him over. Uh, and like Braden said, that creates so much room to the field. It's, it's really, really hard to defend. Um, you know, the downside of that, um, you know, we have it here with the HBO look. Uh, you're going to be really solid in the boundary defensively. The challenges to the field, like we saw in that first clip, there's just so much space. You know, there's just so much room to, to make a throw there um, and, and to put your your best player, potentially, like Braden said, if you want to bring your ex over here, you know, give them a lot of room uh, to make a play and even running the ball to the field. Um, so you get most teams that won't HBO, they'll play like a base adjustment where they'll leave the half over here again to help on that Z or X if they flip their X over. Um, I left them the same to keep them consistent. Uh, Sam and Will, uh, Sam and Will and, and the boundary corner and all that stuff. Um, I kept those receivers uh, all the same, um, but you could flip personnel. Challenge here is you have three on two in the boundary. Now your free safety can be over there, but you know, you have like, if they want to add, we talked about limited motion right? If they want to add these guys into the blocking scheme, it's hard for you to match with numbers because you don't have them um, defensively. So 13 in terms of two back, you know, presents a a real challenge because you have to decide as an offensive coordinator, okay, am I going to match the numbers in the boundary? And if, if we don't, you know, really simple here, if you just run some sort of counter week or, you know, power week and, and eat up the bodies in the front and use these guys as extra blockers, it's tough because you can't add uh, you can't add with those slot receivers because one of the players that should be adding is helping double the X to the field. Um, so those are kind of some of the challenges, you know, that you're going to run into uh, with two back formations specifically. Um, now we had some issues here at the start uh, with, uh, with the start of our slideshow. So what I'm going to do here um, is just quickly turn the screen share off. Um, you know, coach, if you were a, a young coach or an athlete that's playing, you know, in a two back offense, um, what, what would your, your go-tos for where are you looking on the field to better understand what the defense is doing? So let's, let's say it's 31. Um, so you're running some offensive play out of 31 as a player, who are you looking at on defense to try and get a tell for how they're going to defend it? Yeah. So right away, my eyes are going to be to the, to the, the, the one-on-one side of the field, whether we're at a 13 or 31, um, where's that halfback? You know, that's something in the game plan automatically here. Um, looking at it is I want to know his number and where he's going to line up. Uh, next to that, you know, would be the Sam linebacker who's going to be the most important tell, you know, from a run fit side of things, um, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and then working up to, you know, a free safety um, should always be in our scans as a football player. Um, understanding where he is. Um, but I think those are those are the three positions, and most importantly, the, the halfback and the Sam linebacker, um, understanding where they are. Absolutely. And I, I think defensively, um, you know, you're, you're always in a position on defense where you're trying to match the numbers created by the offense. Um, and you're never going to be able to do that 
unless you can identify the formation. So I think just going through kind of those two back looks, you know, that we just talked about, I think defensively, the first thing you want to do is ID. Okay. Do I have one or two backs in the backfield? Uh, and if I have two, okay, where is the third receiver? So if it's two by two, we don't have to change our, our defensive structure very much. Um, but if it's two by one, um, you know, we're going to have some, some, or sorry, three by one or one by three, we're going to have some challenges in our structure, you know, that we're going to have to deal with offensively uh, or defensively. And I, I think a lot of people um, struggle with, okay, when that happens, how do I understand, um, you know, what, how my job changes defensively um, and, and your defense, every defense is different, but just being able to identify formations, is this formation balanced or are they overloading us to the field uh, or to the boundary? Um, I think is kind of the big tell um, you know, and, and finding that third receiver. Every defense will have different adjustments to it, but finding that third receiver is going to let you know uh, as a defensive player, okay, this is the situation. Um, and in this coverage or in this run fit, my job is going to change because now there's three receivers to the field and it's two backs. For example, the Sam linebacker. Normally, you know, you're, you're relating to the fullback. In your defense, your job might change um, if you end up in a situation where, uh, you know, you're now, it's, it's now, you know, two backs and there's a third receiver Well, in your defense, the, the half back might HBO and your job stays the same. You might also be in a situation where, you know, if you're, um, if you're as the Sam linebacker now going to be responsible for the third receiver, even though there's a fullback, if there's two backs. So I got our slideshow figured out there. I'm not sure what happened at the start there, but quick refresh and we're good to go. So I'm just going to share my screen again um, and we'll, we'll get rolling with what we thought was going to be the start of the presentation. So I appreciate you coach Ray um, on being flexible, hopping right to the two back, but I guess the traditionalist guys, we have coach Allen on, he'll be happy. We started with two back, you know, that's the, the any Western guys watching they'll, they'll, they'll think we started that right where it should be. So um, this is where I wanted to start the conversation with, with ACE 32, you know, which I think we've talked about the two backs. Now we're going to get into the one back stuff. Um, you know, what changes for you in terms of an OC brain when you're looking to have one running back on the field versus two, uh, and how does that affect you think for players understanding of the game and, and what the offense is trying to do? Yeah, for sure. I think the, uh, I think the big thing out of being at a 32 here is, is, is from a personnel standpoint first what am I trying to accomplish um you know what I think the big player for me in this formation is obviously that that H back you know three three strong um is such a can be such a unique player for us um and dynamic player offensively um so what do I want to do with him at a 32 um you know this also really you know I think everybody when they you know, every quarterback when they're asked to, you know, draw a play probably starts at 32, you know, 32 ace um, really allows you to see the football field well from a quarterback's perspective. Um, but how do I want to use that H back? Do I want to use them in the run game? Um, do I want them to cross formations? Those kind of things are, that's probably the biggest difference for me out of going two back to five R um, is how do I want to take advantage of that player? Cause that's, I think a, the unique position in, in Canadian football. For sure. And that age is typically going to be a receiver that blocks a little bit more than the other receivers. Uh, you know, if you're running any of your two back run stuff out of five R he's obviously going to be involved. Um, the other thing with this formation guys, is it's balanced, right? So in terms of space, so the three receivers are in the larger part of the field. The two receivers are in the smaller part of the field. Defensively, this is typically, uh, you know, what, what most of our defensive playbook drawings are drawn up to. Um, and so not a lot is usually going to change. Your Sam linebacker is now going to relate to number three, but just like in two back, you know, our boundary corner, boundary half are going to relate to one and two in the boundary. Our field half and field corner are going to relate to one and two in the field. Uh, and then your free safety, depending on the coverage, obviously can be pushed to the boundary, pushed to the field. Uh, you know, there's a million things you can do there. And we'll get into that when we get into more specific coverages. But this is typically where things are drawn up from. Um, we covered two backs. That one's out of order. But this is, uh, you know, just highlighting again that that Sam is, is relating to the number three receiver still. It just happens to be, you know, the second running back. So, um, like I said, here's from the defensive perspective. 
pretty simple um, in terms of covering down. Now your SAM is responsible for number three. So getting into, and, and here's the view from the field, like you can even see here, the H is a bigger receiver, usually going to be used in, you know, some sort of blocking context um, a lot in the run game. You'll see them crossing the set a ton in the Canadian game. Um, what I like here too in this picture uh, is that the, the Mike and Will, you're seeing them in both diagrammed in white here. With the 4D linemen, those guys are going to take care of the six gaps. If the H adds a gap, we need to add a gap. If the H and the W add a gap, now the boundary half is going to have to get in the run fit as well. Um, so that was what I was really trying to show with this image here, is that when you're adding a gap offensively, we need to add a gap on defense. That'll typically go in the order of Sam linebacker, then the boundary halfback, then the field halfback, et cetera, et cetera, depending on the formation. Um, so 23 here, you know, getting kind of, I think, into the interesting spread formations um, and, and showing some of the challenges they present. Why, Braden, would people offensively use 23? What are they looking to do out of a, a 23 set? Yeah, you're – for 23, obviously the spacing to the to the the field here is ideal. Um, you're going to have, you know, the free first of all the free safety is a long way to go to help in anything in this formation. Um, with respect to having three players in the boundary um, that he has to be concerned of as well. Um, this formation for me is is a great uh, is a great opportunity to get the ball in our playmaker space. Um, is 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 why I like to go to this formation. I like to RPO out of it a lot. Um, you know, you get the Sam also into the boundary, um, so you you force the Mike to make to have to make a play in the run game um, a lot more so in space if we're if we're running you know counter to the field or, or power to the field. For sure. And, and defensively, that brings us, you know, to our next point. Obviously, the biggest difference here, guys, we say 23, two receivers to the field, three in the boundary. Um, you're looking at now those guys to the field having a ton of room, like Coach Ray said. That's the biggest challenge for us defensively. So if you look at it here, uh, this is how I had it drawn up on the last one, where you see the space these two receivers have to work. But like Coach Ray said, and they're in a bit of a condensed split here, but you know, this free safety has to really get out of the middle of the field to help those field side players. And then that's obviously where you can come back to the boundary side, um, you know, if the if that's how the defense chooses to defend it. But there's a few options for you defensively. Um, most teams are really nervous to have two on two to the field uh, because there is so much space to defend. Um, that's a tough matchup. So you'll see some teams, if they bring the Sam over, usually the free safety will rotate back towards the field. So one option you have is to keep the mic and the will in the box and bring the Sam over. Another option, like you see here, is the Sam can come into the box and the will can come out of the box. And now the will is going to relate to that number three. Um, you know, what are you looking at offensively there, Braden? If you see a team that's going to take leave the Sam to the field, um, but uh, pop the will out of the box, what's what? What are you looking at to do there uh, offensively? Yeah, so automatically you know you hope you have a matchup advantage with the wheel having to play in space um versus your h receiver you know i i think when you see this rotation you know um really they're, they're going to be light in the box um i think my first reaction is we're going to try to put the sam into conflict here um you know with some rpo stuff um and again force that mike to make a play yeah, you also get tough matchups in the boundary, like your will on that H receiver. Usually the wills, you know, playing in the box. So again, defensively not perfect, but it's another way you can match the numbers. You know, the third way is, is to rotate the Sam high. Usually you'll see this with teams that play cover four. And, you know, now the will has to kind of pop out and play here in space when they get pass. Um, but again, it depends on how, you know, aggressive you want to be to the pass here. But you get your free, you get your three players over two. And that Sam is really pushed to the field. And now your free safety is kind of playing like a high wall, you know, in most cases in this coverage. And now your will has to come to the boundary again. Different ways to cover down. Every team's defense will do it differently. Um, you know, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. I appreciate some of you guys sticking through us with those technical difficulties. Uh, but if you can, like the video. Uh, it helps more people see it as well. Um, so 41 quads, I think a formation that, you know, a lot of people – 
to use, especially in the high school game. I've just seen locally here. It's, it's very common. Uh, you know, what's, what's different, you know, in, in four by one in terms of offensively the what you're looking at doing Braden and, you know, how, how did teams try and use this formation to get an advantage? Yeah, I think, you know, for me is, is looking at the bottom or the, you know, the boundary first. Um, again, you allow your, your best player um, to be one-on-one. Um, now you may say that the boundary half is over there, but he's got a lot of responsibilities um, as well to his side of the field. So this, you know, when you see this picture, you might think, you know, he, the, the boundary corner has help. Um, there's a lot of things you can do offensively. I love having, you know, diagonal routes. Um, diagonal routes in Canada are cer- certainly starting to become bigger and bigger. Um, our guy, Tommy, who was on the show, you know, obviously loves to do stuff like that. Um, for me, this really, if you want to flood the field side as well, you have a great members advantage as well um, because that free safety really is responsible. You're four on four to the field there because the boundary corner isn't going to cross that hash. Absolutely. So you, you really get into trouble again defensively. This is the equivalent of three by one we talked about earlier with two backs. But now you have a fourth receiver detached from the set that can quickly get involved in the field. Um, so defensively, you're trying to cover down on these four receivers. You really have two choices. This would be like a base adjustment most teams do, you know, where they're rolling the coverage to the field. And again, like you said, Braden, this boundary half is really where the choices start for, for defenses in this formation. Most teams don't want to give up the one-on-one in the boundary. It's super challenging to defend um, consistently. Uh, so they're going to have at least some options that the boundary half help over there. But that creates this hole in the middle of the field that, you know, if, the, if you're getting multiple verticals, like you said, the free safety gets pushed to the field, the boundary half gets pulled to the boundary, all of a sudden you have space in the middle of the field. So you're in that numbers uh, or space situation again where, okay, am I going to defend the numbers? Meaning do I want to have five over four to the field or do I want to defend uh, the space and say, hey, we're going to leave the boundary half in the boundary because we don't want to give the one-on-one. Well, now whether it's perimeter run or quick game pass to the field or even vertical pass game to the field, your ability to flood zones and, and make it challenging over there is, is really tough you know, on defenses. So here's a picture uh, again of, of 41. And you see here the boundary half right on those boundary hash marks or a lot of people call them the tracks. That boundary half will tell you a lot defensively in terms of how, uh, you know, you're going to defend a four by one set. And the challenge is if he helps in the boundary, you need a little more help to the field. And if he helps to the field, you might need a little more help to the boundary. Um, and it's challenging if you're going to leave your Mike and Will in the box uh, to be gap sound on defense, which is a typical principle of, of defense at any level. Um, you know, you're defensively in the back end going to be in a tough spot. Um, you know, just looking at some here, the first example we showed uh, where that half is really helping in the boundary and maybe helping on the diagonal route coach talked about or a hard post route across the field, but he's really got to be screwed into this boundary wide out. Okay. And the second example would be like an HBO to half back over. So now we're matching the numbers four on four and one on one. The challenge is, you know, you can win all four of these, but if you don't win the one on one, you're in a tough spot. Um, and, and I think that that is something big for defenses to understand is you as a player, right? If you're this will linebacker, you know, your pass responsibility is going to change. If this half's not over here, you better be getting out to help your boundary corner. If this halfback's over here, you can be in more of a position to help in the middle of the field or relate to the running back because now you've already, you know, you already have that two on one, you know, in the boundary. Um, so that, that was where we were supposed to now dive into two back. We had to kind of do the presentation backwards there uh, and start with the, the, the two back and get back into the one back. Anything else in quads there, uh, Coach Ray, that you wanted to address b- before we get out of here? Yeah, no, I mean, I think just looking at the HBO version of this, um, I don't know that there's a formation in Canadian football that makes it harder on a free safety um, right, right now um, with – you know, I think that leaves that that player the most isolated. Uh, he will be in this game. Um, it is uh, like you said, though, Coach. You know, football is a, a game of one-on-one matchups, and you got to win one-on-one. And you know, if you got a bunch of guys that can do that, quads uh, quads is a great place to be. For sure. And got a question in the, or a comment in the chat there about using the running back in the pass game. 
to the single receiver side. Absolutely. You know, um, I, uh, I, one of my favorite things personally as an offensive coach, as a running backs guy, selfishly trying to get my guys touches is, uh, you know, 42 empty pass game. That might have to be one of our next videos coach is uh, 42 empty pass game. Uh, It's so hard. You're right. Um, There in the chat that, defending you know if you if you start from this look here okay you know even if you get your running back out here right now you're going to relate usually have the will linebacker if, if your x goes vertical you're going to take the corner and the half out of the picture and now you get your one-on-one with the will even better if they hbo you know one of my first things to do would be to dump this running back out in the boundary you know and make that will cover that's a you know a great point brought up in the chat there it's incredibly hard to defend the matchups are tough um and it can change the pass responsibilities for the guys on defense, right? Again, if you're running an HBO adjustment and the running back comes out, well, the will, you're the only other guy over there. You better get out of the box right now, right? Whereas if you're, you know, playing more of a base adjustment, when they bring the back out, the will might be able to, if you're still playing zone over there, the will might be able to play his gap uh, and then out into the flat. Um, so that we kind of wanted to go over and say the main, you know, fundamental formations you're going to see in Canadian football um, and uh, working through those, um, through what you're looking at defensively and offensively, really all starting with this, you know, three by two is probably the most common. Um, you know, it's a very balanced formation. You can do a lot of different things out of it. Defensively, you're fairly balanced as well, making it a little simpler to defend. Um, just another thing in the chat here, uh, as well, jet sw- sweep to the boundary side. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. You know, anytime you can attack the perimeter out of quads uh, to the side that they don't, you know, whether they play the numbers game one way or the other, you know, the perimeter away from the numbers is going to be where you want to go. Uh, absolutely. Appreciate it. We're happy to do them. We're having a blast with these. Um, you know, it's, it's been really fun to do them. Um, you know, three by two, obviously it's usually a base formation just because you can run almost all of your stuff out of it. You know, two by three, now you're pushing that third receiver into the boundary, creating a numbers advantage to the boundary and a space advantage to the field. Defensively, you got to kind of decide where your matchups lie there and how you want to defend it. But the defensive players, when you see that third receiver in the boundary, now whether you know either the Will's job is changing or the Sam's job is changing or the free safety's job is changing, just depending on how your defense likes to align um, to those sets. Four by one, like Coach Ray brought up, really, really challenging uh, in the boundary with the one-on-one, similar to the three by one out of two back um, and how your team decides to match the numbers, whether that's having your boundary half kind of split between four and one, uh, which I know is really common, uh, or bringing your half over and saying, hey, we're going to play one-on-one. We're going to keep it simple for 11 guys and hard on one guy. Um, you know, that that's one way to do it or you're going to kind of change some roles across the field, um, you know, to make, to give you a chance to be two on one in the boundary and, and try and play the numbers out to the field. You know, in terms of two back again, two by two being the simplest, um, you know, you're going to be able to run a majority of your stuff here. It's using the space fairly balanced um, and you're going to be able to often, you know, attack matchups, I would say more so. Um, Then trying to create numbers advantages, obviously, with a balanced formation, similar to three by two. But like Coach Ray said, you're going to get, you know, um, kind of basic generic defensive spacing. Three by one, biggest advantage offensively being the defense, like in four by one, is going to have to make a choice. Am I going to give that stud boundary wide out of one on one or am I going to either lighten the box or play short to the numbers to the field? And then one by three, similar uh, to two by to two by three, we're creating space to the field to work, um, you know, and, and the jobs may change uh, in the boundary because now you have more receivers over there than you typically would. Uh, can you go over 33 empty? Good question. You know what? Why yeah, not? Let's uh, do it. Here, let me, uh, if there's any other questions in the chat, throw them in, guys. I'm happy to, uh, to keep firing through them. Um, you know, three by three empty. Uh, first thing I would say is watch the Tommy Dennison stuff um, that we've done. Uh, two videos with Coach Dennison. I would defer to him as the three by three empty expert. Uh, I want that on the record. But uh, here, if you give me a sec, I'll pull up. Uh, I'll I'll pull up our our whiteboard here, and we can talk three by uh, three by three. Anything else people want us to go through? Throw the questions in the chat. Like I said, like the video. It helps more people find it. 
Um, and I'll, uh, if you give me a sec here, I'll pull up our whiteboard. Here we go, coach. A little bonus, a uh, little bonus three by one. Andy, thanks for the question. Appreciate it. All right. I'm just going to pull up our stuff here. For the coach that mentioned, you know, jet sweep at a 41, I really – probably my favorite formation to run jet sweep out of is going to be out of at a 13 with your H or your Y coming coming back across the formation um, to uh, attack the, the large field there. Um, easily one of my favorite ways to run it up here. All right. All right. Hey, uh, Coach Andy, or I, I'm assuming Coach, you know, if you want to let me know if you're looking at this from an offensive or defensive perspective, we'll hit both, but maybe I'll tailor my response a little bit. Uh, you know, whether you're looking for how to defend it or how to use it offensively. Um, here, I'm get, just getting this pulled up here and I'll, I'll share my screen. Hopefully we're all done saying that soon. I'll share my screen. I lost it there. Hold on. All right. Offensively or defensively, coach, did you want me to handle that uh, uh, 33 empty? And we're happy to touch on any other formations as well. Um, there we go. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, Coach Ray, maybe I'll let you start on offense. You know, 33 empty, what are you looking at? What's your, what's your um, you know, kind of go-to in terms of looking at how the defense is defending you? What are you looking to do offensively? And the spacing here, guys, is on it, – it's an American play design system, so it's not perfect. How to defend yeah. would be great. Okay, so, Coach, why don't you go with uh, what you're looking for offensively first, and then I'll get into how we try and defend it. Yeah, no, for me, if, if, if we're going to go 33 empty, it's something I probably want to do if the ball's in the middle of the field. Um, really, because you're going to, you're going to put, you're going to put the, the will linebacker into a, into a tough situation. Um, you know, there's a couple different things I've done in the past, whether you're, you're pre-snap RPOing it to see how they align to it. You know, if you're going to get the free safety to roll down, um, free safety to roll down over three week, um, you know, you might want to uh, you might want to look at uh, you know quarterback draw if the will pops out from a light box perspective. Um, so your five hats on five hats and uh, look at a, some quarterback stuff. You know whether that's quarterback power or you know draw that kind of thing. Um, those are, those are going to be, I mean, it's going to be a fairly balanced formation from a quarterback's perspective. You're going to have three on three. There's not much defensively in, in maybe Jackson, you'll touch on what you can do. Um, but from a just, you know, this is going to be a matchups thing for the most part um, at a 33 empty. Um, it's just, what do, what do I like? Cause I'm, it's going to be a track meet. Yeah. I think, you know, offensively, what am I looking for? I think it kind of depends on, what the defense's response is to it. So I think part of this depends on where's the running back and how is the team getting to 33. So if they're just lining up in it, um, you know, it's, it's a little different than if they're motioning to it. Motion obviously makes it a lot harder, but um, if you're getting 33 empty and they're just lining up in it, uh, it's a, I think a little simpler to handle, but um, you know, you're, you're going to want, to defend their best players first. So for example, if they're, if they were running 33 empty and you know, their best player played this Y receiver um, you know, I would not want to give them three on three to the field. Now that's going to be hard. Right. So I may, you know, leave my will in the box and push my mic out. 
um, and roll my Sam high. I'm going to get to some sort of quarters. The reason a lot of offensive teams love this is it's so easy to diagnose the looks. So, for example, your quarterback's going to see this and have, um, you know, have options to, to throw the ball to. Um, but you're going to have to find some way. You know, you can't be, you know, there's still six gaps, but you can't be uh, six players in the box dealing with this. Um, you know, Coach Scott, a mic directional pass options at a quick game. Love it. Yeah, it's tough on offense. So, for example, if, if offensively, if they're looking to now, okay, let's say, you know, the mic stays in the middle of the field. You know, if they push their will out and push their Sam out, and now the free safety in the middle of the field, if the mic drops this way, they're going to look to throw to the boundary. If the mic drops to the boundary, they're going to look to throw to the field. Defensively, I would say, like, are they quarterback RPOing you with the quarterback draw? I would – most teams that are doing this, I would say probably are or at least can. Um, so you're going to want to have some plan for how you're going to defend that extra gap. Um, like one thing I would, I would look to do is probably stunt. Um, so one thing you could do is say, okay, we're not going to give you the easy throws and run some kind of game on the inside, um, to try and disrupt quarterback draw. Um, cause that's, you know, it's, it's hard if you just rush straight up the field, the other way is to try and steal a gap. So, you know, you're going to have to have somebody to gap, right? If you're going to get the will out and the Sam out, you got six gaps for five guys. Um, you know, you might play some, some version of zone coverage um, and, uh, you know, have one side of your line play heavy. We talked about this in the RPO clinic last week. Uh, the other one, which I'm really interested in, is uh, the tech stunt, which we talked about in the RPO um, clinic last week as well where now basically if, you know, this rush is almost, he's going to stop and he's going to wait to read draw. And if he gets quarterback draw, he's going to try and fold up inside and play the draw. Um, and it gives you, you know, a way to play um, six gaps with five guys. Cause your rush is really, you know, if this quarterback ran bootleg or I shouldn't say bootleg, but just boot uh, and, and tried to, you know, run some kind of sprint out, he can stay and set the edge, or if they tried to run some sort of jet sweep, he could stay and set the edge, but on draw, he's going to stunt inside. Um, that's not a bad way to go because it lets your mic, you know, play the opposite gap away from the stunt. Um, you know, that, that to me is you need to have more than one way to play it. Like I think a lot of people, um, if you get a lot of thir uh, 33, it's hard because you, you don't have enough in your package to be multiple. Um, but I would say, you know, if, if you've got a team that has good athletes or receiver, you want to force them to run the ball. Uh, if you've got a team that has good athletes, uh, good offensive line athletes, then, you know, you're going to want to try and force them to throw it. The other thing is, is to blitz it, which is not like, I know some guys will bang the table and go, oh, if they go empty, we're going to blitz it. And, you know, the offensive coordinator in me knows there's good answers for that, but you just want that offensive coordinator to know, Hey, if you're going to go empty, you might get six guys. Um, and, and just have that in the quarterback's mind. So I would say it's like a menu of things. You want to be able to stunt the front and the tech stunt video that I talked about that we do with our RPO clinic, it would be good. We didn't talk about quarterback RPOs, but the premise is the same. Um, that, that would be something I'd look into doing uh, or just calling stunts in the front uh, and then being able to bring pressure and bring six, um, I would say would be. Uh, would be a key one as well. The other one you can do is go with like the wide front and then, uh, you know, run two games. So, you know, you can have these guys push up the field. Again, if you're worried about quarterback draw, these guys push up the field and then, um, you know, loop your two ends inside and, and almost then try and play you know, six gaps with four guys um, just because when you're getting quarterback draw, you're not going to get the, the uh, you're going to get more one-on-ones, right? And, and so you're able to, to be a little safer there. That might be one way, say second and long to let you cover a little more. The other thing would be getting a really good athlete in at will, like getting a, a sub out from the will um, so that you can play, you can play more coverages uh, and be really, really comfortable. Um, off the top of my head, that, that's probably what I would do. I would look to stunt the front. Um, and if that lets me hold on in the run game, I can play more base coverages. 
Um, if it doesn't, then my next escalation would be, you know, show that and, uh, and, you know, bring whether it's, you know, walking guys up, uh, and, and getting into six man pressure, uh, would honestly be my neck, another escalation. And then you're just going to have different coverages. I think this is where split field coverage is huge. Um, so say, you know, Hey, we're going to play man to the, to the side away from their best receiver. And we're going to play like match or zone to the other one. Uh, to, to the side of the best receiver. So again, like, let's say their best receiver is this Y, um, you know, then maybe I want to leave my free safety to the field, uh, you know, and I want to play uh, essentially, you don't have to show it, but essentially you're going to play man in the boundary or you're going to play like zone, but the mic is going to be late to it, you know, so rotating the coverage to the, the side of the field, with their best receiver. You know, so you might get the mic as the hook to curl player here. Um, you know, you got your your post player, your vertical player, uh, and your flat player. So you're still getting four on three, but the, you just know the mic's going to be late. Um, and then I might pair that with, uh, you know, if, if, we, if the mic is dropping to that side, I could probably straight rush it on that side. Uh, and then run the tax away. The text is something I'm looking at more and more myself. I want to learn more about it. Uh, we talked about it in the RPO clinic last weekend, um, but it, it's it's a challenge to run, I think, because you know the R needs to read the play, and and is, anytime you're two gapping a defender, you know that hasn't changed. That's still hard, um, but you know it's tough. Like if this tackle is trying to set him vertically up the field, you can just basically say to the R, hey, like you've got the quarterback unless, you know, if we get jet sweep or something or it, or it stops being empty, right? If we got, you know, say jet sweep, now he doesn't need to run the stunt. If it's, if he gets jet sweep, he can just go set the edge, right? Cause now you don't necessarily need, you know, and now Braden's over there thinking about running quarterback counter and that bothers me, um, you know, but there's, there's obviously you got to defend what you're going to see. So, if you're going to get the QB draw stuff, finding a way to stunt the front, the tech stunt's really interesting uh, to me to two gap that rush end. And then he can just spy in the pass rush, honestly, um, which, which isn't a bad way to go. And then rotate the coverage to their best player. So if their best player is over here, I want to be four on three right away. One, two, three, four. And then I'll be late to this side. And if their best player is over here, vice versa, roll the coverage this way uh, and, and be late to the field. Coach Scott in there again, Mighty the Reed with the fire zone deal. Yeah, that's another good one. Um, Coach Scott is reading my mind here. Um, yeah, the, the fire zone stuff. Uh, we did a video on pressures um, with uh, Scott Brady from Mac, who's incredible. Uh, great stuff. So if you're going to still try and play some cover three, you know, but maybe bring, uh, end up bringing a non traditional rusher. I love this impromptu defending empty clinic. It's making me wonder a little bit about my answers to empty. Um, you know, you can kind of, you know, bring pressure from one side of the field and maybe drop the opposite defensive end. Again, just trying to make it harder, um, you know, for, for these guys to know who who's, because one of the benefits offensively from this look is, you know, you know, you know a lot about the coverage pre-snap because you got everybody out of the box. Right. So maybe doing something like that is a very simplified, you know, drawing, but um, having your, your will um, be your, your wall player or your flat player and then drop your end, you know, and now your mic uh, is going to have to, you know, drop out and replace the field. Again, I would probably do this away from the side of their best player. Uh, if you could, uh, it's a good way to go, but yeah, that's, that's where I'd be there. Um, Coach Andy, that's a great question. Is there any other formations or anything else people want us to get into? Um, we wound up having more guys on at the end here talking about 33 empty than we did throughout. Um, but that's all right. Any other any other points guys want us to hit on there? I'll give that a minute, Coach Ray. Any other thoughts about empty? Yeah, no, no. It's uh, I wasn't really prepared to talk empty, but uh, definitely make me think about it. And uh, you know. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with, with motion, especially up here, you know, getting into even 51, um, you know, really, uh, you know, 
making some moving parts uh, happen um, that I think are interesting to touch on and maybe something we can do for a video here in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. So hey, thanks guys. And thanks for all the participation there in the chat. Got some great coaches uh, commenting and asking some great questions. Help us out, share, share our resource with your players. Um, you know, we're going to do more of this kind of football one-on-one game football one-on-one stuff. Uh, and next week, really, really excited. It's not game football one-on-one, but we wanted to get to you as soon as we can. We're going to talk with uh, former Ticats O-line coach and now the O-line coach with the university of Ohio. Um, Oh, Coach Scott wants four by one tight end week cover down options. Okay, give me a sec. Um, next next week uh, we're talking with Coach Alan Rudolph, um, who is the uh, the founder of the Rock O line play. He also um, former uh, former O line coach for the Thai Cats, so he's incredible insight on the Canadian game. Um, but also uh, is now the offensive line coach with the University of Ohio. Um, so a lot of, uh, a lot of great, um, a lot of great insight into both the Canadian game and the American game. Um, and, uh, he's done two great videos with us already. So real quick here, coach Scott, um, four by one tight end week cover down options. This is really, really hard because now you have a seventh gap and you have an immediate gap with this tight end. Um, but he can still, you know, release and run a route. And now you're in a situation where, okay, typically, you know, we talked about your boundary corner being your best, um, your best cover player. Usually you don't want to waste them, uh, as you'd say, on the, covering the tight end, right? Most offenses, especially in Canada, that tight end isn't going to be running the primary routes in the offense. Um, and so, or your boundary corner might be a smaller guy and you don't want them to have to fit up in the run game. So you get some challenges uh, in terms of formationally with that. Um, and then you have the same problems you had in four by one to the field, right? Um, you know, you're, you're, if you want to be four on four, um, you know, typically you want to be five on five. So some teams, you know, you're going to want to, you have to have seven fitters. So probably the easiest way to do it is, you know, to have your free safety come down on number four, your boundary half replace the free safety and your boundary corner is going to play the D gap and be man manned up on the, the H the tight end here. Um, but again, that's not often the best use of your boundary corner. So I think most teams um, would leave their free safety in the middle of the field uh, and have their boundary half play in the box in relation to that H. Now the only challenge is, you know, your X usually, you know, it, when teams do this, their X will play the four to the field. Um, you know, you can put your boundary corner there, Again, depending on the coverages you want to play, that's a very different spot for your boundary corner to be at um, to know his responsibility in different coverages. Now, maybe he's an inside wall. Usually he's a, an outside player in your coverages, but that would be kind of my go-to. And then you can spin the coverage however you want. Um, you know, you could, you could man this up and then play your three receiver coverages with these four, um, you know, or you can, you can play your four on four coverage or five on four coverages here as well. One thing I would definitely do is shift the front to the tight end because um, it gets your mic, um, you know, your mic a little farther to the field and gives you more options in terms of if you want to rotate the coverage, um, you know, or get him uh, out of the A gap a little closer to the action in the pass game if you wanted to say, uh, you know, drop, whether it's your Sam or your two halfbacks and end up with three on top to these four. Um, you know, it gets your mic a little closer to that low wall spot. And then to add there, Braden, on stuff you like at a four by one uh, with a tight end week. Yeah, no, I, you know, it, similarly to, to 41, you know, I think it all depends on your adjustment. If you're going to leave your, you know, your boundary corner having to play off the ball in the middle of the field is a very different position than having a sideline to help them. I think I want to test that as an offensive coordinator. Um, and see how they how he performs in that situation um, but uh, you know really I think there, there's a lot that can happen in the boundary here um, if you got if you got a, a tight end that can that can take care of that boundary half you're, you're going to be in a really good spot um, in the run game wise yeah, I think one one thing that you know you're starting to see a lot and I saw a lot studying some CFL stuff in the last couple of weeks is just the, the run game action here uh, with the, the jet sweep from the X. 
uh, kind of into the split zone stuff we talked about, uh, where now you're going to dead ball toss that to the X um, and you're just going to token fake the back. Um, and now this end, right, is insulated here with the tight end. Um, you know, he's going to step down and play shuffle and then you're popping, you know, that jet sweep into a lot of space. You can just block down and, and you know, maybe at the high school level when ends are a little less, you know, predictable, um, you know, you just block down uh, and have the running back, you know, lead up. Uh, in the boundary, this would be like our old loose stuff. Coach Scotto on here and, and Coach Real know from Laurier. Um, you know, that's super tough to defend. I, I would be, you know, this is a great look out of that as well. Um, but it, again, a huge challenge offensively. The, uh, the football 101 has taken a distinct, more advanced turn as, as Coach took getting on here asking good questions at the end. But um, if, if there's any other questions, I'll, I'll hit them on here, guys. If not, thanks so much. We've been well over an hour now. Um, you know, like I said, Alan Rudolph next Tuesday night, um, as an O-line guy myself, uh, you know, I know coach Scott is on here. Um, uh, coach Rudolph is one of the best offensive line coaches I've ever been around. Uh, and you know, his experience in the CFL combined with his experience, you know, in, in the American game gives him a really, really unique perspective, I think, to help Canadian coaches, um, because he's, he's coached in both, uh, you know, both sides of the border. And I think, um, you know, be having that CFL experience combined with, you know, coaching younger players as well. Um, obviously, as a college coach, is super beneficial. Um, at the high school, oh, we're going to talk screen game and live Q&A. So if you have any questions for Coach Rudolph on anything O-line related, he'll be on here to answer them. Uh, at the high school level, are you having automatic checks for different formations like quads or checks uh, based on the coverages? Yeah, um, you could do it both ways. I mean, I think – I like to have fewer coverages so that I can build in some variety within them based on formations. Um, so I would say my personal preference would be checks within the coverage. So for example, if we're playing quarters, you know, this is how we're going to defend it versus if we're playing match or, or whatever. Um, but I think you need your pre-snap looks to look as consistent as possible. So, um, you know, to try and cause the offenses trouble. So great question, coach Thomas. Um, I would say, like it, it depends on how much you see it in your league. If it's a small problem, I might not worry about your tendencies where if it's like a big thing, something someone does, I think your tendencies then become really important. So for example, if you're going to only HBO when you play man, like that's a high school mistake I see all the time. Um, you know, if you're going to only HBO when you play man, the other team's going to know when you're in man. Um, so you probably don't want that. Um, so, you know, being able to, uh, like I said, especially talking 41, have different 41 and 31 have different ways to defend the X receiver. If you look at, uh, we did a video on the tight front, um, tight mid front, uh, which is on our page. It can be very helpful there. Um, finding different ways to double the X, uh, I would say is, is that's a good video. Um, but yeah, I would, I would say in general, um, I would have, I would be able to play all my coverages out of my alignment. So that might involve some subtle changes to the coverages. That's a great question. All right. And if there's no other questions, guys, I'll hop off. This has been great again next Tuesday night, Coach Rudolph. Uh, I cannot more highly recommend. We're going to talk coaching screens. Uh, and then we're going to have a half hour Q&A for people live on. So um, thanks so much for being here and for the people who have been here through the start, pushing through that, that technical difficulty we had there at the start uh, with some of the graphics, but uh, we made it through. Thanks guys. Thanks guys.